Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roebuck, and you all know my co-host, Justin, the ginger beacon of hope bird, and uncle, I got even older, Ken. <laughs> this episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all your Harley parts, accessories, and motor clothes you could ever want. On today's episode, we are starting with something sad, the loss of Arlen Ness, but we are providing a happy ending whoa, whoa, whoa. by providing a recap of the 2019 <laughs> Teen Giddy Up Vintage Chopper Show. Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was done on purpose. Oh, yeah. Uh, special shout out to our Big Wheel and Power Wheel patrons, Dave, Mark, and Nat. Thank you for supporting us and raising money for Project Clean Slate, where we are looking to purchase a Harley, customize the hell out of it, and give it to a deserving veteran. If any of our listeners would like to pledge their support for this worthy cause, please head over to BetweenTwoWheels.com, the two is spelled out T-W-O, and click on our Patreon link. We hope to get this project going this year so we can finish it over the winter non-riding season, and with the help of Adam Sandoval, deliver the bike in time for the next riding season. Another kind of catch-up cleanup note here for our live stream we hope to have it up and running by the end of april where our big wheel and power wheel patrons will have special access to the recording of our episodes and special q a sessions with the crew damn he made it through that whole thing yeah i'm i'm just kind of speechless yeah it's like i've been practicing i feel something. like he's been looking himself in the mirror and be like god damn it you can do this <laughs> you can do this <laughs> Do we want to also point out the fact that we got a shit ton of new gear? Because yes, I yes. feel like a thousand dollars worth of new gear needs to be addressed. Well, the mix board is a thousand dollars. The mics are, th- well, combined about three hundred and twenty dollars, three thirty, something like that. And then the boom arms were like one hundred and fifty. Okay, so but, like I said over a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Gotta it, be a well, second, we went wrong. That was a weird flex, but okay. Yeah, yeah. but. <laughs> We didn't pay that much for all of this gear. Of course not. So that's that's what's important. But coupons. We <laughs> listen to our to our listeners. They provide feedback. Some of them, uh, Connor sent angry <laughs> messages <laughs> saying how poor our quality of the sound was, and we agreed. Said, we were having issues. You suck. Yeah, we were having issues with our sound quality and consistency. And we, and we knew we knew it. <laughs> yeah, we knew it, and we did everything in our power. Many many late nights trying to unfuck the uh, the problem, <laughs> or at least clean it up as best as we could. But hopefully now with the new equipment and the new capabilities, we'll be able to actually provide higher quality content for you guys. What are you? What I are you? keep losing sound on my left. Speaking of, of gear, I keep losing sound on my left headphones. It's fucking with me. You look like you're just. You keep looking I at your cord like, like, like you're baffled by the the length of it. First of all, like dude, I don't way. know what to do with my hands. <laughs> no, it's just like I'm not moving, and it just keeps cutting out. So I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe your thousand dollar board's fucked up. I'm blaming on the board just because it's not something that I had control over. So your batteries in your head, headphones, Boo. or it could be the fifty cent mic adapter or the <laughs> headphone adapters we're using with yes. the board. <laughs> Hey, baby steps. That was yeah, for that was exactly. some Patreon money because you know we're not getting a whole bunch there just yet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> 50, cent, and, fifty cent mic adapters, and you know we get a couple more uh, Patreon members, we'll get the one dollar. <laughs> well, actually, adapters. everything mm-hmm. from Patreon, anything from our sponsors that have a cash value, all of it goes to Project Clean Slate. So oh, the board and everything comes out of our pockets. So there's that your uh, pocket. Well, I didn't want to say that. I was giving you guys some some props here. No, I don't nah, want people to think up. that I'm putting money in this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Ken. I put, I put time in it. Yeah. That's, was, that's all I put in. You can barely afford my time. Yeah. So, <laughs> how are you guys doing? <laughs> doing all right. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Got older, sick as hell. I'm better. Yeah? yeah. Well, I mean. Older and sicker, or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. At the same time, actually. Oh, nice. Nice. All right. So, we all felt a tinge of pain on March 22nd when the news of Arlen's death hit social media and he has a great history of building some amazing motorcycles a family business spanning three generations creating unique parts and accessories for almost all cruiser bikes including bikes that are no longer on the market like victory yeah do any of y'all have arlen ness parts i do not on Uh, this bike i don't man i I generally can't afford them they're not that expensive well for for some of the really small stuff, I guess that's right. Yeah, I have grips. So I, I mean, grips are pretty inexpensive <laughs> all around. Yeah, yeah, I really like them though. Um, but Arlen S will have a name that will forever be remembered as someone who inspired an entire generation mm-hmm. to go out and build something unique. Oh, well, you can't say build. Bullshit! I can't. Say. <laughs> 
<laughs> Here, here's the thing. The internet hates if the you word build. Take something and change it, and you're putting your your time, your sweat, your tears, probably some blood too, into it. You're building something. I agree. I mean, even if you're just changing out your grips, if you're doing the work, it's you. I agree. So anyone who hates on someone calling an accessorizer a builder, you know, they can go fuck themselves. Yep. So right, right in the pussy. Or something. So they, they probably have one. Let's go through kind of a brief history of Mr. Ness. Uh, born 1939 in Moorhead, Minnesota. Man, he was Minnesota. Old. Minnesota. Uh, he moved to California around the age of 12. Uh, they said sixth grade, but that's 12-ish, I guess. Um, he was a semi-professional bowler. Wow. What? And he worked at a bowling alley as a pin setter, and he was a semi-pro bowler, and he used that money to buy his first Harley, which was a 1947 knucklehead. Good God. Um, Arlen Ness gained recognition for designing a line of custom motorcycle parts and customizing his bike with unique paint styles. So it oh, was they were one of those always insane. Yes. yes. Just insane. Nothing was ever black. I don't. I, well, just thinking of them, really. I mean, they were always bright, vivid colors. Yeah. So on his victory line, and we'll get to this in a little bit, but his victory line, he had an all black bike that had like 400 different shades of color in there. Jeez. Just like a splash of paint that just looked amazing on a victory vision. But um, he built a number of award winning bikes. So here's a couple of them. I didn't go through all the list because there's a lot. Uh, but some of the ones out here, the Untouchable, which is a super stretched out knucklehead powered cruiser that had really a unique carb out design where this is the first bike I ever saw this, where the carb was actually sitting on the frame and on the down tubes just behind the, uh, the forks or actually just just in front of the forks, maybe hmm. depending on how you're looking at it. But it's just badass looking, but it's super raked out. Uh, very chopper esque. A lot of them were. Yeah. Um, oh wow, that's way out there. I just pulled a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, he also oh. had the Two Bad, a super unique bike powered by two shovel head motors. So you know that thing leaked like a sieve. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you need that external lubrication. Yeah. Yeah. Right, riding behind that bike, it probably felt like you were riding behind a car that had its windshield wiper <laughs> sprayers going. Um, wow. The Ness Nostalgia. Golly, that thing's crazy. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's insane. Uh, the Ness Nostalgia, which was built off of kind of the design concept of a 1957 Chevy Bel Air. Just gorgeous. Oh, wow. Super pretty. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. I've seen a couple of... I haven't seen any of these. I've seen a couple of rip-offs yeah. of that design. But he, he was the first. Of course. But just the lines on that thing is sexy as shit. Now, for me, these are my two favorite Ness bikes. Uh, the Ness Arrow and Smooth Ness. Uh, Smooth both, Ness. Both are done up in more of an art deco styling oh that smooth ness is dope that smooth ness is uh has its styling cues off of the vintage bugatti so yep. if you look at it now you like think like the 1930s just that's ridiculous fucking amazing so I, I love those i feel like that's what indians trying to do <laughs> with their with their big giant fairings <laughs> yeah <laughs> or the fenders or the fenders yeah, yeah. um back I, I don't remember the year i want to say 2005 2006 uh arlen Nest the company so Arlen Corey and I can't remember the the uh, the other kid the grandson but they teamed up with Victory Motorcycles had an 11 year run with them uh, where it was the Victory Nest signature series of motorcycles that had the Nest family paint designs as well as Arlen Nest accessories and custom touches such as wheels things like that wow uh, some uh, just gorgeous bikes came out yeah, of that. That Victory Vision's really cool. Yeah, the is it the black one with the the red? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty dope. There's another oh, yeah. one that was uh, all black, blacked out motor and everything, and then just had that like a paint bucket with forty different colors dropped on it. Is it that one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, just pretty. I think the bike itself is ugly as sin. Yes. But the design concept mm -hmm. is gorgeous. Um. Kind of just wrapping up the Arlen Ness section here. Uh, Arlen inspired an entire generation of bike builders, and he will be deeply missed. 
Um, our listeners can go and find out more about Arlen and his company by heading over to arlenness.com. So we'll take a second here for our advertising break and come back with the Giddy Up Vintage Chopper Show recap. Eventually. All right, we are back. So we've transitioned from a bi-weekly episode to a weekly episode so we can get our information out faster and have more relevancy uh, as to what's going on in real time. So last weekend, we hit up the Giddy Up Vintage Chopper Show um, up in New Braunfels, Texas. This was my first chopper event, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, let's let's do initial thoughts about this. Uh, let's start with you, Ken. Initial thoughts. Uh, I'm glad I didn't pay 15 bucks to get in. What? Yeah. How'd you get it? I had to pay 30. Oh, no. See, Hasso oh, bought Hasso, me. It was my birthday, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so God. he was like, oh, he's like, I'll get you a happy birthday. <laughs> Why did you pay 30? Oh, yeah. Tracy was with us. Yeah. I was like, why'd you get double charged? <laughs> No, it was, uh, aside from that, uh, there were a lot of cool bikes out there. Yeah. Uh, and I personally enjoy the, I guess you could call them like rat rod mm-hmm. looking yes. choppers. But I mean, I also appreciate the ones that are like like the unicorn one that's completely full on painted. Is that the, the one the that is up. super raked out, but super high as well? Yes. Okay. That's the that's the guy that uh, Shade Tree was tell, telling us about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that thing was pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, first impression, glad I didn't pay. 15 bucks but uh yeah there's some there's some pretty cool bikes in there yeah yeah okay what about you justin i i i'm kind of just mirroring ken i enjoyed the choppers i i remember i can't remember if it was ken or roadblock but i remember i was sitting there looking at a bike and i was like to someone that doesn't know what they're looking at this bike looks like a piece of shit yeah that was me but if you look at it and see the tiny little details like first off the frame was painted so that right yep. there is a, a project all on its own yeah and then how each like nothing of course nothing was stock on that bike everything had been taken off and modified in, in some sort of fashion even if it was taken off so it could make it look like it had been rusted it it's different patinaed. yeah patinaed. Yeah. <laughs> but uh some of those bikes though were just rust buckets oh some of them oh, yeah. definitely were <laughs> yeah oh yeah there i don't know if you saw it it was it was closer to the entrance kind of up on the hill they had taken like a uh, like a soft tail like a newer soft tail tank and kind of like scuffed it up and, and things like that and it that bike was really cool i really enjoyed that one i would like to do a build like that i wouldn't want to do like a a vintage chopper that, no. that that's not something that appeals to me just because it seems like nothing but a fucking headache oh sure. yeah like well, searching for parts as a well oh see that's God. the thing is with these unless you're going for like a, a pure custom fully painted bike all these are just they're rat rods they're yeah. they're scrapped together so man I, you know i've got these i got this dyna frame fuck let me you know, add on these appropriate engine mount tabs and I can throw in this engine in there. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that I mean, really that's kind of the easy part. As long as you can get an engine and transmission that work together, yeah. everything else is just well, bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you can, how are you can piece it together? Yeah. To yeah. I mean, function. like they were using, you know, wallet chains or dog chains yeah. for their, uh, <laughs> for, for the the clutch. Sui- suicide clutches. Yeah. The clutch yeah. linkage. I was like, damn, that's pretty fucking cool. I, I did like, it looked like a, the dual gauge Dyna, gauge yeah where one of the gauges was a was a beer holder oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was and if you go to our instagram we have a couple of photos posted on the between two wheels instagram uh, page that uh some of the things that we saw that we kind of liked again that frame paint job though was, that was zebra intricate yeah looking it one. was super intricate that and i don't know if that was a paint job or if that was a dip oh i don't know man that'd be a hard dip to do that would be so hard just I mean, they could do I mean, it. Just because, you know, yeah, I mean, I guess. They do bumpers on trucks and stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. But. From, I, w- I would bet that that was probably painted. For sure. And I can just imagine peeling off all that damn tape. Yeah. Each one of those fuck. things. So I was, I'm kind of in the same boat. I don't like choppers as something I would want to ride. I oh, do like not. looking at them, but I love my creature comforts. I oh, love yeah. fuel injection. I love yes. the fact that my motor <laughs> is not known to leak. And I I love suspension. Was, yeah, that was that was my thing. I like sus- I like <laughs> suspension <laughs> yeah. and a good seat. Yeah. I mean, you know, all those choppers they're they're bar hoppers. Now, yes, yes. people do travel cross country on them and shit. Yeah. But for the most part, the average person you know builds them or buys them just to go cruise around town. Yep. Yeah. And have a talking point. Sure. 
I wouldn't mind buying one and flipping it. I think I, I'd like off a be, cliff. <laughs> no, as in selling it to someone who's going to pay a stupid amount of money because they don't they want that conversation piece they want yeah. that you know ooh look at what I got but they don't want either they don't have the skills or they don't want to put in the time and work yeah I mean for me I, I like the concepts that they were coming up with to your point Ken just having a chain as your as your clutch linkage and having a small little shifter where you're you're reaching down blind. Oh yeah. And you're reaching for I think it was a cue ball. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of cue ball, balls, yeah. eight balls. Yeah. It was it was cool. I would never I would never own one to ride. I would maybe own one as a showpiece. Yeah, same. I it would be a it would be a trailer queen if yeah. I had it. And I, I think it would be fun to build. Oh, oh, I think absolutely. I think absolutely it'd be fun to build a rat rod chopper. But I would love to do it in kind of the counter chopper world. And just do it to piss people off by going with, you know, a Milwaukee 8 motor with a six-speed oh, transmission, <laughs> fuel injection. And, you know, one thing I will mention, we saw, we saw a tank that was smaller than Brad's tanks. Oh, my God. It was like a half-gallon tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I was it was like, a preemie tank. Yeah. Not even a baby uh, tank. No, but find that thing in the NICU. What did you guys think of the crowd, the atmosphere? I, I tell you, so I've I've been to a lot of normal, I guess, rallies and shows. This crowd was completely different. Yep these these folks were super chill, laid back. Even you had a lot of MCs there. There were that quite a few MCs just there. Just chilled out. Yep. And you know, there's a lot of weed smoke in the air. Oh yeah. Um, so there's a beautiful aroma going on mm -hmm. it was so funny seeing the cops running off yeah oh yeah. the cops were just freaking <laughs> hilarious like just let it go dude just yeah you're not gonna yeah. change anything out yeah. here. yeah no. but uh the crowd though was super cool and you know if the girls decide to get topless the girls there i wouldn't mind seeing topless i mean hey i mean they're not the like 65 year old women you have to look really there far were a down a lot a lot of young people there yeah yeah it was definitely a younger crowd and, you know, we talk shit about it. Shade Tree talks shit about them. But yuppies. There were a lot of yuppies. Oh, there were there. absolute yuppies. fucking yuppies. Jesus. That's one thing I was going to point out is it did seem like, I mean, I hate using the word posers, but I feel like there was a lot of people that were trying really hard to put on that, ooh, look at how much of a rebel I am. Oh, yeah, that, that 60s, 70s look. Yeah. I got a shitload of fucking pomade in my hair. Their, their fucking arms look like a flash art wall at your local yeah. tattoo shop. Yeah. But I will say... The parking lot had impressive bikes out there. Oh yes, but yeah. The parking I, lot had a lot of nice bikes too. <laughs> there were, a lot, I, I mean, think some of those, a lot of those bikes were better than what was in the agreed. show. Oh yeah. yeah, and it was at least they're riding. There they're were a lot of performance those, bikes out there, and I was like, yeah. oof. There were there were some performance dinas out there. I was drooling over. But I saw a, co a couple of really good looking girls riding up on choppers. Oh yeah quite a few women riding i mean there's that one girl that her jeans were hiked up so fucking tight around her ass that you uh -huh. could see what religion she was yeah <laughs> you, you were hanging you were flying your drone or something i never flew my drone no? unfortunately no no i had complications because first off it was windy as shit yeah so i was already kind of on the fence of oh god should i do this is really not that safe and then I walked all the way to the car and realized I forgot my SD cards and oh, bike. So I was like, "Nope, this is a sign." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it, looking is it at one side, I, I didn't check. I didn't even connect to the drone to see. But uh, uh -huh. I'm glad that I didn't because even once we got in, I saw that there wasn't really much I could have seen, anyways. Yeah, there wasn't really. I think getting a, a giant aerial shot of just seeing the parking lot would have been the most interesting part. Oh, yeah, doing yeah. a flyover of all the bikes that were parked outside. Yeah, that's about all I would have gotten out of there. Now, looking at the size of the event, I would say maybe two to 300 people is what I noticed, and probably that many bikes as far as in the parking lot. Because uh, there's the two parking lots, the one you had to pay, and then the one that we parked in. Yeah, the, the free one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that $10. That's such bullshit. <laughs> so, hey, someone's going to pay for that mortgage on that land. Yep. And they, they made a lot that day. Oh, Jesus I mean, that's Christ. But the crowd, though, again, super laid back. The vendors were not what I expected for a motorcycle place, a motorcycle show. I mean, they had a lot of non-motorcycle vendors there that oh, are yeah. actually selling some pretty cool shit. What yeah. was up with, like, the 
two or three tents that looked like a flea market. Like they that's, weren't selling anything bike related. It was just like junk. That, that's what they were. <laughs> yeah. No, that's well, that's chopper. But, you know, just if it looks like a pile of shit, that's what they want to buy. Cause yeah, then they I mean, can turn that into something cool for their bike. Yeah. yeah and they and obviously they weren't charging a whole bunch to set up a, a quote yeah. unquote booth. No. I mean, cause there was people there that were just selling, you know, what you would consider garbage, yeah. you know, leftover pieces that you found in your garage that your granddaddy's grandpappy owned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> but no, it was a chill crowd. Uh, I was really pleased with that. There wasn't mm-hmm. a whole lot of action going on. There's no machismo going on. Yeah. yeah. Some it, guy bumped into Tracy. And didn't he, feel tense. He flat out apologized, and you and I weren't even near. He just flat out apologized. Hey, I'm so sorry. And I was like, damn, you go to a hog rally, and these guys, these fucking bankers who were, you know, weekend warriors, they'd be all hard-ass machismo well, motherfuckers. Well, because they got good insurance. <laughs> <laughs> so when they go to so the they hospital. Take an ass whooping. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, one thing I did really like was the amount of dogs. Oh, yeah. There was... Ken got to pet a fucking wolf. I got to pet a wolf. A 140-pound wolf. Yep. Don't pet his... Don't pet his back near his butt. He'll bite you. Yeah. I got to pet a bull terrier, which was dope. I got to pet a rescue pit bull, which was dope. Mini Australian Shepherd. It was a good day. Love dogs. They're better (laughs) than people. It was so funny. That little bull terrier, uh, it was a girl. Her mom said that, like... She's really she doesn't like things that she can't see. So mm-hmm. like they were at a booth that had like a something blocking the fence, and there's people back there because that's right where the parking lot was. And the whole time it was barking, even when I was playing with it, it would have the ball in its mouth. It would arr, arr, arr. <laughs> it would bark with <laughs> with the ball in its mouth. <laughs> uh, hardcore bikers, but we will melt for a puppy. Yep, I love yeah. ice cream and sprinkles. <laughs> at least I do. Damn right. uh, it's kind of cool. We ran into some fans. We did. I think yes. that was the first time we've, we've met between two wheel fans that would like ask because like they saw me first and they yeah. asked, where is the between two wheels guys? Yeah. I was like, oh, well, they're actually they're here. <laughs> yeah. They're somewhere. Just look up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> look no above kidding. the crowd. Well, she was like five foot four. Yeah. No, she was like five two. <laughs> yeah. She was shorter than five four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we got a picture with her. It's kind of cool. Uh, her husband's, you know, super cool they both ride they're both looking to upgrade to bigger bikes and she asked kind of the opinion i was like get the bike that you can grow into don't get the bike that you're ready for today get the bike you'll be ready for in a year and speaking of bikes and being ready justin when the hell is the battle donkey going to be ready tomorrow tomorrow yep allegedly no tomorrow tomorrow okay there uh, there's i mean you, I'm at the point now where I'm pretty good at being able to judge where problems are going to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't see there's there's a very 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 tiny chance of anything going wrong tomorrow. I mean, it's super simple shit. You, you did judge the fact that that floorboard was going to fuck up, and you still took it off. I had to. You didn't have to. I had to. You can tell your wife no. What are you talking? Oh no no no! <laughs> I'm, I'm not I was talking about when I had to take it off to put the new exhaust on. Oh, I had to because it had to come out and it still rubs. So yeah, I'm talking about that floorboard mount. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the wrap would have looked like ass if we didn't do that. So that's a chance I was willing to take. <laughs> I wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but tomorrow all we've got left to do is graphics and those lights on the tour pack. Oh, and a shift linkage. Other Sweet. than that, I mean, the shift linkage is really the only part that could possibly give us an issue. Yeah, and. It's it's sad to say it, but you're selling the Dyna. Uh, it's it's sold <laughs> by the time by the time you're hearing this, it's sold. Yeah. So this episode comes out in four days. Okay, no, maybe not five no. five days. I'm but. dropping it off on April 13th. Is when I'm meeting up with the guy. So, yeah, so he next, next. he had funding within six hours of nice. the bike going up. He had literally an approved message from his bank. Nice. And was this a Nigerian prince? No, no. <laughs> Sending his cousin from New Jersey in no. a moving truck? Navy Federal. <laughs> <laughs> Real money. Real money, Real yeah. Money. <laughs> not, not one of those PayPal scams. No, definitely not, no. I, I was kind of I was kind of weary because the guy technically is out of the country right now, but first off, he's been a, he's been a commenter for 
years. That's mm. how they get you. <laughs> oh yeah, they they build that <laughs> that rapport. Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, but it's he, the, it's he the sent long me, con. Yeah. Yeah. He sent me videos and everything like that. So. I mean, this is not my first bike I'm selling, so I'm protected. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I just decided to to pull the trigger. I didn't realize how much the bike was worth. (laughs) Sure. I kind of had an idea, but I got a cash offer of 10 grand. And I was like, Hmm. if I'm getting cash offers at 10 grand, it's probably worth about 50% more than that. Yeah. So I did some research and they were going, I found some... I mean, of course, you had your shit boxes that were going mm-hmm. for seven grand, but there were some, especially out in California, where the club style is real big. I saw one listed for thirty-five grand. Well, what thirty-five they grand? Have, like, fucking gold flake it inlay. Had, wait, wait, that's that's the Indian Roadmaster. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, to your point, a lot of that was in paint. It did have a paint job. I can't remember who it was by, but it was by a, a pretty reputable reputable name, and it was everything was painted. Ah. The battery boxes were painted. The engine guard was painted. Pretty much everything was painted. Uh, stage two, all accessories, all engine covers had been done. Um, granted, I still don't think. It's worth thirty five grand. No, um, it's, probably, still, it's still a dyna. It's still a dyna. <laughs> I would say low twenties. Um, mm, that's, that's still. That's, they, you're talking a different market, though. You're talking California. Yeah, but still. Uh, but well, uh, so, to that point, though, I know not all Californians are retarded. <laughs> so why would they go and spend that kind of money on a on a fifteen thousand dollar bike? The exact same people that would spend eight thousand dollars on a shit box chopper. True. It's it, they don't have the time, they don't have the skills, they just want that conversa- conversation piece. Same people that spend you know eighty thousand dollars on a performance car, true. When you can buy one a couple years old and build it up to something better than that for half the price, sure. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I listed for fifteen k. Uh, I probably could have listed it for more, considering how many offers I got and how fast I got it for. But I felt, given the mileage, because mm-hmm. it has sixty two hundred miles on it, which oh god, is, killing it. Well, for for <laughs> Dinah's is high. It's higher than you know something under five uh, under five k. Um, I felt it was fair, and I got a like I said, I got an offer for my asking price in under six hours. So dope. Yeah, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I felt like it was at a good point within the build to let it go. I felt like going you know stage two with it, doing chain conversion, all that. It would almost depreciate the value of the bike. Yeah, at this point, it's still quote unquote Rideable. unmolested yeah, you start getting Rideable. into a kind of a more unique market yeah exactly that's that's a great point um because i mean once you break open the motor to put in you know stage two and all that plus i think the chain is a really big thing a lot of people don't like the chain especially if they're gonna be riding it for longer distances yeah just a lot yeah, like more a, maintenance like a daily a more yeah. yeah chains but, suck yeah uh, i mean basically my plan was to you know, stage two it, chain conversion, and then just beat it to shit was sure. essentially my plans. And I was like, eh, when I can make so much money on this bike, like for just to give you ballpark numbers, I'm I'm selling this bike for more than what I paid for it brand new. So well, there you go. Take well, you that into account me. with the amount of money I've put into it already. I'm getting back a hefty down payment for my next bike. But and yeah. of course, <laughs> this is you know. As you always do in private sales, you always get more money. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the the six and a half percent sales tax that we have here in Texas that you would have to cover on the next bike, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it comes out to next to nothing. Yeah. Um so without telling us what bike you're gonna get, mm-hmm. when do you feel we will be seeing a video for the next bike? Seeing a video pff, early to Sometime in May, probably. May. Cool. Maybe. Um, I'm still kind of debating on what I want um, internally. <laughs> FXDR? Definitely not an FXDR. God damn no. no. He's getting a Grom. Oh, Jesus. With a sidecar now. With a sidecar. Yeah. We already saw it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, hopefully sometime in May. Um, I've already gotten the design down. It is. I'm so excited for this bike. I'm ridiculously. I'm. I'm learning more that I'm very into the design aspect, and because it's almost it's because like when I when I did the iron, I I photoshopped what I wanted to look like, but I still left a lot of room for kind of at the whim decisions. Yeah. Like I didn't plan on having the graphics on the side of the tank, for example. That was just kind of like, oh, I don't like how plain it looks. Let me design something after the fact. But for example, and then the Dyna, I had I did zero renders on it i literally just built it as i went 
the battle donkey on the other hand i did a pretty detailed render on it and yeah. it was kind of i felt pretty cool trying to match that photoshop rendering so on the latest bike i really rendered it i'm talking about i put on bars i put on exhaust mm -hmm. I, I put on a lot of stuff onto the render so it's gonna be fun to see how close i can get to that that final render well, the render we saw it looks dope yeah i'm oh, yeah. so excited and i even i even did research on the fonts yeah so the fonts are actually accurate nice nice all right <laughs> which, so. is, which is funny because it actually turned out to be a base windows font <laughs> That doesn't surprise no, me with, right. with your <laughs> inspiration. The concept, yeah. Yeah. The concept <laughs> that you're going yeah. for. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, no, I should be revealing. I'll be revealing the design to the Patreons sometime next week. Sweet. And Sweet. then uh, to the actual channel sometime in May for sure. Okay, cool. And then it's just waiting for the right deal to pop up. All right. Because there's not a lot of used ones. <laughs> you're not worried about uh, the, the, the Patreons spoiling it in the comment section of other videos? Uh, I mean, it's going to be such a short amount of time anyways. I mean, there's only going to be... Oh, shit, I guess it is freaking the April. second week of April. Yeah. There's only going to be about three three to five, depending on how quickly I get these other videos done. There's only going to be three to five videos coming out in between. So, I mean, it's possible, but I I think they'll respect it. Anyone who's willing to pay money to see behind-the-scenes stuff... I mean, I've never had anything leaked yet, and I share the Battle Donkey stuff weeks ahead. So. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. Unless cool. it's an accident. I mean, I could see that accidentally getting leaked. So speaking of accidents, we had an accident uh, last week with the Battle Donkey. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> One year to the day when Justin decided to boop my Street Glide special for dominance. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the show notes. But one Smash year, the shit out of it. <laughs> one year to the day... He boops my new trailer. Mm -hmm. I have this. I had the tags on this trailer for less than four hours, and he smashes it to shit. <laughs> I'm like, yep, damn. We just, we just put that fucker together too. Yeah, yep. yeah. The day before. The day before. Yep. Ken came over. And we we we. I bought a Kendon ride up trailer, and which is bad ass by the way yeah. this is no plug i'm not getting paid for this uh, i'm not either that trailer is dope yeah <laughs> so i went with their premium american-made version oh, um it's supposed to be heavier duty obviously their lights are not as heavy duty but <laughs> they're I mean, not bike resistant <laughs> <laughs> but you're not supposed to slam into them either but yeah. uh it's a fold-up trailer. now i have a two-car garage with high ceilings so it was a I, weird flex but okay yeah whatever you know, <laughs> So like hoist it up to the ceiling out of the way. So, you can so I was able to, I decided to go with this trailer so we could fold it up and put it up against the wall and still have room to have the bikes in there and not, not have to worry about anything getting dinged up. And I found Kendon. I looked at a bunch of others, but Kendon was the better brand. And after getting it, I just, I love this thing. It's so badass. I, you talk, like you talk up things a lot. Like everything that you're like, oh yeah, this, this, you know, this GoPro mount, it's the best thing ever made. There's like a thousand and six reviews and most of the time it's accurate, but I think this has been the most accurate thing that you've topped up <laughs> like, because it is badass. I, for the price point and for what you're, you know, the fact that you can put it in a yes. standard two car garage, it's the perfect trailer. You're paying about half the cost of a, a box trailer. It yeah. weighs probably 30 to 40% of what a box trailer weighs. Now, granted, you don't get the security of it being enclosed, but that added ability to fold it up and it only sticks out like what, 27 inches or something like that? Yeah, something it's like that. It's not far it, at all. You can, I mean, if you got a two car garage that you park a car in, you could put it up against the wall and still pull a car in in yeah. most garages. They have that little extra space yeah. on the end. Yeah. So it's it's definitely worth the money. And seeing how easy it was to load and unload once we knew what we were doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, when I got home from dropping you off, I was able to I, I had to test it out to make sure I could do this in case Tracer's at work and we needed to get the trailer out. I can actually pull that trailer up the driveway by myself without yeah, with a little bit of a struggle. But mm -hmm. it, once you get it moving, it's it's just yeah. it's stupid easy. So it's it's lightweight. I think the total weight on the trailer is just under 500 pounds yeah. and it can tow 2000 plus pounds yeah. so two full baggers can sit on it without having to take anything off well once you get that uh, the tongue jack with the like a rolling tongue if you get the rolling kind yeah it'd be way easier to move yeah yeah definitely but 
All right, so we have a new segment we're starting. Now that we're going weekly, we can have more interaction with our with our listeners. So we're calling this the closing argument. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Yeah. So when you see another biker pulled over on the side of the road, do you stop, Ken? Yes. As long as I can stop safely. Yeah. yeah. I've actually uh, stopped in the last year. I've stopped three times for bikers for various reasons. First one, I uh, saw a guy pulled over on 151. He was on a on a limited. Mm-hmm. Ran out of gas. That sucks. So I drove to Lowe's uh, there at 1604 in Calabria. I bought a five-gallon gas can. I filled it up with premium and took it back to him, filled up his tank. And then this, uh, one of the second times, the guy was he had pulled over. He had just lost. <laughs> he, but he stopped on the side of the freaking highway to figure out where he was rather than... Go you somewhere know, safe? Yeah, go somewhere safe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the third time was just a couple weeks ago. A uh, biker had pulled over. Someone had lost a pallet in the middle of the freeway. Oof. And he was... And I had missed the pallet in mm-hmm. the truck and saw him and was like, oh, shit, did he hit it? Mm-hmm. You know? So I pulled over. No, he was actually walking back so he could clear the highway. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a prospect for some MC. Uh, but he, he was a, he's a bird brain. Uh, he knew who you were. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sweet. So, you know, I got to plug plug our channels and stuff, you know. Yeah. All right. Justin, what about you? Depends on, is he on a Harley? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it actually does depend on a couple of factors, though. One, where are they? Mm-hmm. Like, if they're, you know, pulled over at a gas station or something like that, chances are they already have someone on the way or their cell phone can bring someone more equipped than I am at that given time. Mm-hmm. Um, two... Uh, where or I guess that like if they are out in the country obviously I'm going to stop because chances are their cell phone isn't working um, I did stop for a guy it was back when we were still in the old house I had my truck even that's how long ago it was I pulled over and I, the first thing I asked is is there anything I can do that you already don't have on the way <laughs> yeah and uh, he goes no I got I got a flat I got a, I ran over a nail I was like oh okay nothing I can. he's like yeah I got a buddy with a trailer already on the way I was like cool um, if they are on like the interstate, mm-hmm. depending on the size of the shoulder and what vehicle I'm in, if I'm on a bike, no problem. But if I'm in my car, my truck, depending on what the shoulder looks like, it might be more dangerous for me to pull over. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I'm out riding, I usually, anybody I see pulled over, I go thumbs up. If they give me a thumbs up, keep going. For me, that is the number one thing I look for. The thumbs up? Thumbs up. If yeah. they give me a thumbs up, I don't need to stop nine times out of 10. I'm not stopping. Yeah. And people think I'm a dick for saying this, but look, I have 13 rounds in my gun. I don't want to use any of them if I don't have to. And there's too many fuckers out there who fake a problem with their bike or they'll have, and if it's a hot chick, Oh, never pulled over. I am definitely not stopping. Nope. Because she's a honey pot. Yep. She's there, so when you get off your bike, you get jacked, and all your shit's gone. Yep. So, again, if if it looks like some hog member, let's face it, just the weekend riders, I'll look and see if they give me a thumbs up, and I'll keep on going. If not, I'll judge my surroundings. If there's a bunch of trees or shrubs or a bunch of shit on the side, I'm not stopping. Yep. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I'll be the dick who's not going to do it, but... For our listeners, tell us your thoughts by leaving us a comment on the YouTube video for this episode or on the Instagram post for this episode. What would you do if you see another biker pulled over on the side of the road? Fun fact, you know how to signal that you are in need of assistance. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, exactly. Now, uh, take your helmet off and place it behind your back wheel. That (laughs) is the uh, universal biker sign for I need help. But it'll get dirty. Pussy. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace.